If you want to create multiple page books in Affinity, like a brochure, magazine, or book, using Master Pages is essential and will save you a ton of time. Master Pages define reusable content for your document. In this video, we'll start with the basics, then we'll look at a real life example of formatting the book Frankenstein. I'm here in Affinity. Let's start by creating a new document. I'll select File, New. Let's make it an A3 document. And now make sure you select Multi Page. So I'll click Multi Page down here. I have facing pages selected. Let's scroll down. Let's make it eight pages. Then I'll say create document. When you do this, Affinity should bring you to the layout studio. You can see layout highlighted up here. If you aren't there, you probably forgot to make your document multi-page, but you can click layout to go to the studio here and manually add the pages in. Over here, you'll notice a pages section and a master pages section. And on the left, we have some of our familiar tools. Some might look new to you if you haven't used the layout studio before. Now let's say we want to design a book and have some common elements along the top of our pages. To save myself a lot of work, I'll create a master page. So I'll expand master pages here, and then I'll click this button, add master. For now, let's just accept the defaults. Note that we can give it a custom name up here if we want. I'll click OK. And now we have our master page defined. And what I can do is start adding content to this master page. I can add a vector shape. I'll add some text. I can even place an image. I'll select File, Place, and let's choose this image here, and I'll put it in my document. Now what I'll do is apply the master page to my other pages. So I'll select my pages down here. I'll right click, and I'll say Apply Master. And I can choose which one I want to apply. I've only created one so far, so that's the only one that's available. We have different options here, but I'll just click OK. And now you can see as if I go into these other pages, my content is there. So I'll scroll down, and all the content has been duplicated. So the nice thing about the master page is that any change I make there affects all the other pages in my document. So I'll double click on my master page. I can change the color of the star. Let's change the text. I could resize the image. And now when I scroll through my document, all the other pages are affected as well. Now this doesn't look very practical yet. We'll get to a more realistic example in a moment but I want to show you how you can edit a page separately from the master page. Let's go to pages four and five. Now it's easy to add specific items to a page. I could add some new text here if I wanted. And of course, that's just going to affect this page, not the other pages. So you can see it's not there. That's because I'm on a page, not a master page. But what if I actually wanted to change the color of the star on just this page, but not the other ones? Well, if we look over here in the layer stack, we can do that. Notice how there's this new text I added, but there's also this group here representing the master page. And if I expand it, these are the elements that are on the master page. So by default, I can't really edit any of those elements. But if I right click on the master page here, I can say edit detached. And now what happens is I'm in detached mode. And then I can click on the individual elements here, let's say the star, and I can move it. I can change its color. And notice how if I scroll up and down my document, it hasn't changed anywhere else. And when I'm done, I can say finish. Now on this page, if I click over the star name and I hover over it, you can see that it tells me what the unlinked attributes are. So it says transform and fill. Other elements are still linked. So actually, if I go back to the master page, if I change the number of points, you can see it changes on the other pages, but actually that attribute is still linked here. So the only things that will be unlinked are the properties we changed. So it's a cool little detail. Let's now apply this to a realistic scenario, creating a layout for our whole book, Frankenstein. I'll create a master page up top. And let's create frame text for each page. If you want to learn more about frame text, check out my recent video on that topic. I'll leave a link in the description below. So let's look the frame text tool here. Let's drag it out. And just to make it easier to see for this video, I'm going to add a style to it. With it selected here, I'll click this button. It says text frame. What I can do is actually add a background color. Let's just give it yellow. We can change this later. And I'll give it a stroke. Let's make it black. Let's make it thicker. And I'll just make it dotted. So now I can easily see the extent of that text frame. Let's center it. Then I'll hold Command, make a copy, and put another one on the other side. Center that. Now this next step is key. We want to make sure the text can flow from one frame into the other. 
So what I'll do is I'll select this first text frame here. And if we zoom in, you can see there's a little arrow there. It's kind of hard to see, but if I click on it, I get this icon here. Now I can click on my other text frame and there's a line between them. This means that text we put on the left side, if it overflows this left side, will go onto the right text frame. Now let's apply our master page to pages two and three. I'll select pages two and three here. I'll right click and I'll say apply master. All the defaults are good. Let's say okay. And here we have our text frames. Now let's get the book content. Frankenstein is in the public domain and it's on Project Gutenberg. For simplicity, I'll just go with the first four chapters. So let's grab this chapter one, scroll down. I'll control C this. Now what I'll do is go back to my pages here. This is not the master frame. I'm on my pages. Let's double click this first text frame. I'm gonna press Command V to paste it in. Let's make the text a little bit bigger so you can see it. So the text is flowing from one frame to the other. But there's an obvious problem. Our text clearly needs to go beyond two pages. If I click on the second box here, notice that there's a red eye indicating that some text is hidden. Also down here in the bottom left, you can see this icon indicating an error. If I click on this, it's telling me that there's overflowing text. Thankfully, there's an easy way to deal with this. Let's go to that final text frame over here and zoom in. Notice we have a little red arrow there. It's kind of small on this system again. But what I can do is hold shift on my keyboard and click on that arrow. And when you shift click on the final text frame, it'll automatically flow your text out. So what that did is automatically create all these new pages in my document. And this is the text flowing completely all the way to the final page. So you can see it's 32 pages total. With one click, Affinity was able to auto-generate all of this. And by the way, if that didn't work for you, make sure you were actually on the pages you were using, not on the master page. That can be an easy mistake to make. Let's look at how we can add some more details to our pages, such as titles and page numbers. So I'll go back to the master page. You can see the master pages are still blank. Let's say I want to have the word Frankenstein at the top of every page. I'll use a text frame here. I'll say Frankenstein. Make it bigger. Let's get rid of that formatting. I'll center it. And now let's add page numbers. So do this again, I'll add another text frame down here. Let's put it at the bottom. And now I can do is right click on the text frame and I can say insert field. And these are all gonna be the dynamic fields I can add. So I'll choose page number. Let's make it bigger. And you can see it just looks like this hash mark there. But if I actually go to the pages, it will put the correct value in. So page two, page four, page six. Let's go back to the master page. I want this to be a little bit smaller. Let's put it there. I'll snap it in. And I'll hold command to copy it. Let's put it again on the other side too. And now when I look at the different pages, we have the correct page numbers on the corners. And you can format it as you like from there. Now say we wanna add a bunch more pages to the front of our book like a prologue or something like that. These usually have different types of numbering. Let's see how we can handle that situation. I'll go to the first page and let's add some new pages here. I'll say add pages. We'll add four pages after the current page. Okay. Now, if we look at our original chapters here, it actually starts on page six, but I want the numbering here to start with one. The key to this is to use the section manager. So I'll select my pages here, six and seven, and the section manager is this icon here. So I'll click section manager. By default, section one is my whole document. Let's add a new section here. I'll click this button. And now we have two sections. Section one is page one through five. And section two is page six through 36. That's the page I want. And from here, what I can do is with section two selected, I'll click restart page numbering. I'll start at one. I like that, that's fine. And I like this number style. We can choose other ones there, but I like that default one. And I'll click close. So now I can see that my book starts counting page one, even though we're actually on page six and seven. So it's a very convenient way to reset the page numbering. Let's look at how we can add a prologue. Let's duplicate the master pages. Let's call master page B. I'll click on it, let's call it prologue. And just so that looks different, I'll select these text frames. 
Let's make the background color blue so you can see that it's different. And now I'll select pages two, three, four, and five. Just right click, apply master. And this time I'll choose prologue. I'll select okay. You can see these pages got the different treatment. Now what I'd like for the prologue is for the numbers to look like Roman numerals. So I'll go back to my section manager. The prologue is this section here, section one. I'll do the number style. And let's do this one here. I'll click close. And now I can see my prologue has this new numbering scheme. So now we can see how things work. Let me go turn off the yellow color here. I'll select my text frames. I'll select the text style. No fill. And no stroke. Let's do the same thing for the prologue. Now one thing I like to do is format the headers for my document. What I want is for each chapter name to be more emphasized. I want to start on a new page and to also have some space above it. Well, we can do this by adding text styles. So I'll select my chapter one here. Let's highlight it. Now we can do is change the style up here, or you can open up the text style menu. I'll pull this out. If you don't see that, you can open it through window, text, text styles. And I'm gonna apply the heading one style. So now I can see it changed the heading a little bit but we want to add more customization. So what I can do is double click on heading one and I can edit the settings further. So this is my heading one style and these are all the different options I can change for it. Let's go to the paragraph style here. I want to add space before my heading. Let's say 200 points. Then when it says use space before, I want to say always. I'll click okay. And I can see my heading has this space before it. Now what I can do is apply that to the other headings too. So I'll scroll through. Here's chapter two, I'm gonna highlight it. I'll select heading one, let's go down. Here's chapter three, I'll highlight it. I'll select heading one. And we have one more. Here's chapter four, I'll highlight it. And select heading one again. Now it's looking pretty good, but I want one more change. I don't like how the chapter two starts with the other stuff still there on the page. So we wanna make sure the chapters start on a new page. Let's open up heading one again. I'll go around to the flow options. And now next to start, we can choose to start it on the next page. Let's say next odd page. I'll select that. I'll click okay. Let's close this. And now you can see all my chapters are going to start over here. So I'll scroll through. There's chapter three. And there's chapter four. Looks like we made a mistake here. Now there is one thing you need to watch out for anytime you do this type of reflowing, and that is to make sure the end of your text frames still contain the text. Let's scroll down here. I can see it's not working immediately just because we have this red icon there. So I'll scroll down to the bottom of my document. And indeed you can see there's the red eye, which means everything is not filling. But thankfully this is easy to fix. We can just hold shift, click on the arrow, and it will expand out again. So anytime you make these big formatting changes, always make sure that the end of your text is still showing. Let's do one bonus trick, adding an image. How can we add an image into the middle of this document and still have our text flow dynamically? Let's look at how to do that. I could add the image directly, but just to show you another tool, I'll use the image frame tool. So I'll click this tool here, picture frame rectangle. Let's go somewhere to the middle of our document. I'll draw it here. And this would be a picture frame. Now, obviously if I'm moving it around, you're not seeing the text get affected at all. We wanna change that. So what I can do is edit the text wrap settings on this frame. Now my computer here is not showing in the menu bar, but I can right click, say customize. And I have these options here for wrapping. So I'm gonna click and drag these onto my toolbar. I'll say done. Now with my text frame selected, I'm gonna click this icon here, show text wrap settings. And you can define how you want the text to wrap around that object. I'll just choose jump. And I can see as I move this around, the text dynamically jumps. It's reflowing around wherever I put that image. It even works if I resize it. So let's actually put an image in there with the text frame selected. I'll select replace image. I'll select my Frankenstein image again. I'll click open. And now I have this image in here that we can place wherever we like and the text is dynamically flowing. Once again, double check the bottom of the document. 
In this case, we're pretty good because we had a bunch of space there. But sometimes if you add multiple images, it might not be. And all you'd have to do then is shift click on that final triangle again to extend the text. And here we have our final result. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to see more Affinity videos. Also, let me know down in the comments what topics you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.